uh, the first day he walked through the door. And uh, it's just a great example of, of somebody that, you know, kind of has the V-swing problems or the hole in the swing problems. So you're going to see, kind of had a little early stride. And then as he goes to swing, I want you to take notice of his front arm starting to push away and then what his bat head does with his body as his body rotates. So you can see how his hands are going down, his front arm is going down. There's a lot of tension underneath his left bicep there, okay? It's almost like that golf drill where you put the, the glove underneath your left arm. And so what happens is his bat head comes, you know, kind of way out here and down. And through the contact zone, he goes like so. And you can see how he cuts underneath that ball, pops it up, and his power V, meaning where his arms are facing, is straight down. Okay, this is usually a telltale sign. This is what players are taught. Swing from A to C. They're taught to extend their arms down, you know, swing straight down. Um, if we trace this back a little bit and watch how the pitch is coming at him, okay, it's kind of on an angle like this you can see how his bat head goes underneath that yellow line and cuts underneath. So his hole, he's going to bring it back up to here. This would be one place he could make contact, but he'd probably pull it foul, and he's rolling his wrist and decelerating. The other place he could make decent contact um, is probably between these two frames right around here. So you can see, and I'll draw his red line again, You know, his swing kind of goes like this. And this is the big hole. Okay, the big hole is going to be between this mark and this mark. Anywhere, and this is your contact, and this is where you want to make contact from your back thigh to out in front of your front foot, about 12 inches or so. This is the happiest zone in the world where he needs to make contact, and you can see his barrel isn't on plane there because he continues to swing down and extend down through the ball, thus making the ball go up. And that's the big you know, fallacy that people think, ah, I keep popping balls up to the infielders, i got to get on top more. And so what they do is they end up trying to swing down more. And the more they end up swinging down, the more they end up hitting the back of the ball and popping the ball straight up. So again, if players are having issues where um, they're popping up to infielders, this is the problem. If they're getting jammed, this is the problem. If they finally hit the ball hard, but it's usually foul, this is the problem. So where do we fix that? The biggest problem is you know, if we draw a line here, I always tell players, you got to keep your hands above this line. And you can see as he goes down with his hands, and we trace that, he's going to go down with his hands, and then he's going to, well, he never even comes back up with his hands. He just has a big wrist roll. Typically, your swing plane will match whatever your hands are doing. So what we need to get him to do is we need him to keep his hands up. How do you keep your hands up? By lifting your left humerus bone, that bone that connects your shoulder to the elbow, getting that up like you're throwing a Frisbee. Um, you're airing out your armpit. Whatever you have to do, you want to keep that left arm up and keep the bat against the shoulder because if, as the bat stays against the shoulder, if your bat comes off your shoulder, it means your hands drop. So uh, let's bring up uh, another one of his swings here. So this is about... Three lessons in, you can see we're using the impact bat here. Uh, we're doing the no stride technique. So this is, you know, the beginning of the learning process. I want you to notice the connection with the bat against his shoulder, and I want you to notice what his left humerus bone is doing as he goes to swing. We'll scroll through here. You can see how well he stays connected back here. Okay, and you can see how this arm is starting to come up. So again, if you get to a good short three position, you're going to be okay. And then as he releases through, I'm going to draw a line from his bat right here to the ball. And let's see if he stays on it. And you can see now how he doesn't go below the line. He could make contact here. He could make contact there and hit it to right field. He could make contact there and foul it off. And what does he do? He ends up hitting it way out in front. So now he's on plane from here to here. Not underneath and on plane, but completely on plane. Okay, let's watch how his bat head slides right along that yellow line. This, this is great because your timing doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now look at where his power V is. Okay, it's up and it's out. Okay, here's his power V pointing out towards the field before it was pointing down. I'll bring that other clip up here in a second as well. We can compare the two. 
Okay, so this is a very good swing. How did I fix it? I told him, hey, there's a wall right here. I told him he's got to get this up, and I told him he's got to keep the bat against the shoulder. We did a lot of short threes where he dropped and just stopped right here and kept the bat against the shoulder. Okay, we did a lot of that. Next move I'm going to bring in here with him is going to be a couple uh, days later, maybe a week or two later, and you're going to see we're going to have it. We have a stride built in. I still haven't released the bat against the shoulder. Very important. Why haven't I done that? Because that was his biggest problem. His bat head would come off his shoulder too early. So there's no way I'm going to let that go for the time being. I want to make sure he fixes this problem. So now we're going to see his stride. You know, he's got his weight shift built in now. He gets pretty good torque through. But again, bat still against the shoulder. Look at the left arm. Okay. In fact, actually on this swing, he's getting good extension with his left arm. Not quite up a whole lot, but he's lagging the bat back, and he kept the bat against his shoulder a long time. So it's certainly not a problem. Again, I'm going to have his bat drop in the zone. Let's connect the dots and watch his bat stay right along that yellow line. It doesn't go down. Again, his new power V is up here. Okay, let's take a look at his hand path on this. If I draw that line at the bottom of his logo, bottom of his chest, he wants to go down a little bit, doesn't he? But then he pops it back up and comes through to contact. And now he's hitting line drives on a good trajectory versus cutting everything. Okay, so if we put his put his first swing up here. I'll do my best to try to sync these up. Whoops. Okay, so now I have his first swing on the left. I have, uh, you know, a couple weeks later on the right, and I have him synced to impact. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see how his stride transition now is great. He's striding and going right into his swing. Okay, you can see his hips are opening, but notice how much further his, his hands are back. Okay, notice how the bat is still against his shoulder and cocked. He hasn't started to unwind his wrist like he's done over here. Okay, again, bat against the shoulder. We keep going through. You can see the distance here on the left growing. Look how far back his bat head gets to towards the catcher. Okay. Here is a, this is a great position. Look how far his shoulders are, but look how he's lagging the bat behind. There's a lot of power there. Okay? Here his shoulders are about on the same angle of his bat head, okay? which means there's not a lot of separation. Here you can see, you know, here's his bat, and you can see how much further his shoulders are opening, yet he's staying connected. There's just a ton of power here that he's, he's gained through the lessons. And then, of course, as he comes through, to contact. Notice the different I impact positions. Okay. Notice how much his shoulders are through, his hips are through. Here on the left, his shoulders are still open. His hips aren't too, too bad, but he's definitely squishing the bug on the left. You can see his toe. I mean, that's not what this tutorial is about, but it's good stuff to look at. You can see how vertical his back foot is on the right. In fact, if we look at his back foot, you can see how it drags a little bit on the right with his new swing because we're getting that right hip and right thigh through. So again, what we need to work on, notice the hand position here at contact. It's not down by his belly button. It's up in front of his chest. This is a very strong position. Then as he extends through, he's still accelerating into his power V up here. And with his old swing, you can see he's got a huge, huge wrist roll. Okay, that's a big problem. Players that swing down and have this V swing that goes down and then they pull it up, you can see how high his follow through is on the left. Okay, you can see how high he pulled it up. He swung straight down and then he pulled the follow through straight up. So again, in a perfect world, if the pitch is going to come at us like this, your hand path should be parallel to that line up here. It's that easy. It's a lot easier said than done for sure, but that's what you want. If the hands go down like this and up like this, you're going to have a V-swing. Your barrel is going to go down like this and up like this. So good luck with it. Make sure they stay connected with their back shoulder. Make sure they get their lead 
arm up, tricep, bicep, humerus, whatever you want to say. This is good to get this up. As long as you stay connected with your backside, you're going to be fine. You're going to get a lot more body in the swing. Good luck.